Uh, welcome to Perry's ground line videos. Timer started. Uh, Perry made a post yesterday that was I thought was kind of clever. I'd never thought of it before, but it's an option of, uh, of uh, showing a ground line for elevations. Bottom line is, I think I've sent elevations to uh, layout five different ways, five different ways of doing it. This is what I like. I like to have a ground line like this. That's that's an exterior elevation, and then this is a section, and that's a ground line. You know, you got a you got a base. I think uh, when I first started sending things to layout, I'd, I'd get something like this and this. But we're going to talk about all the different ways of doing it. And what what Perry just uh, mentioned, F six, and uh, here's here's uh, where's my house? I don't I don't need that one. No. And this is my floor plan. Here, here's my floor. You don't care about the floor plan. This is what you care about right here. This is the house I built, and it's on a piece of land, and the land slopes. You know, in the front left, front left hand corner, you can see it's really low right here, but at the back, it slopes way up like this. So here's the question: You know, how do you how do you send an elevation play out? Uh, I, I use this. I don't know if I said this. I use the SAM, so all this is all set up for me, and I don't even think about this. I've been doing it this way for five or six years; it doesn't even come up. I, so I kind of forgot how I even did it. So I'm just sort of reviewing how I actually did this. Um, F6. Let's take a look at uh, this elevation right here. This elevation right here, you get you get you get to see the foundation. Well, I don't like to show the foundation. Maybe some people do. There was some some while back. Uh, you can make this a dash line if you want. There's a way to make it that a dash line. I don't bother with that uh, because if I have step if, if I have step footings and stuff, it just gets complicated, and it's more information than people really need need. But how is this section? Where is this section taken from? Where is this section taken from? That section is actually taken through the terrain. Here's the terrain right here. Uh, you, uh, let's give it a line style of uh, red, and uh, a line size of 200, just so you can see it. Uh, turn line weights on. Yeah. So there's my terrain, and that section was cut right through the terrain. And since you cut it right through the terrain, you don't get to see the side of the terrain. And this is what you get. I mean, I think there's an extra line here or something for one for one reason or another. I don't know what it is. I mean, there's some funny little sign. I don't. I don't know. Whatever. Some. Well, I guess I guess this is the end. Of, this this line right here is the back of the terrain, the very back of the terrain. I don't know. Do you want that? I don't know. And then there was a way of putting a fill on it and making that a dash line, that kind of stuff. I, I don't want to get into that. But here's what Perry says. Perry says, take your el your elevation outside of the terrain, and now you're going to see the side of the terrain. And so that's what Perry's seeing right here. This right here, that's the side of this, the terrain. Now, keep in mind, my terrain is only 12 inches thick. So it's only covering up a little bit of that. So Perry's going to say, well, you go ahead and make the terrain thicker, you. Uh, open up the train. He's going to say, make it 48 inches thick. Now watch this. Oh, I, I think I have to send the picture again. Oh, one day this is going to be auto. Yeah, see, I made it 48 inches. Now if I update it, control W, yes, you're going to see that it's, now it's all hidden. You see that? Now it's all hidden. All all that stuff is, I don't even see the bottom of it anymore. And that's what, what, that's what Perry would advocate. But Perry went a, a step further and he said, look, Take a, uh, an overview of this, and what's neat about this is you can take this terrain, and you can give it, um, you can give the terrain a, a grass material. And for the longest time, I gave the ter terrain skirt a grass material. But if you go in there, and you give it, a, I don't know if you can see my whatever. I'm, I'm getting into my this right here. I'm getting. I'm going to give it a material uh, sand. I don't know if you can see this or not. Sand. Okay, so now I can give my the stuff underneath. Is that is that whatever? What is that? Is that, is that dirt? Gray dirt? It's sand. Whatever. It's sand. But but how is that sand defined? It's defined as what kind of pattern does it have? It has a volume, or if an area, it's just there's no fill to it. But suppose you come over here and you give it a uh, where is it earth earth material? Give it an earth material. Now watch what happens. And this is what Perry. Oh, 
Uh, you think that's 12? Yeah, yeah, see? See, I gave it a material now. You see that material? So now what Perry says is uh, you come over here to whatever we had, open this up, and now I have an earth material. W, close it. See, he's automatically getting his terrain fill. That's really clever. That's pretty cool. So here's one cut through the middle of the terrain. And so you don't get to see the side of the terrain, and it doesn't work very well. Perry says go outside of the terrain. Now you can see the side of the terrain. You automatically get your, your ground base. But here's the problem with that. And the problem is, and here's another one that he took outside, but you know if the terrain slopes up high, you're going to block half the house. So it doesn't always work. It only works you know, if, if, if the terrain is working for you. And then you could say, well, if, if you have a different uh, layer set for each elevation sent to layout, you could choose when to have the uh, terrain turned on. So sometimes you can use t Perry's method, but for in a situation like this, you can't use Perry's method. So it's clever. But it doesn't always work very well. And, 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 and if, if you have a big site, a real big site, and you have to put your camera way out here, well, now you're going to have your turret, and, and the slope's quite a bit down. Now you're going to have your, your ground fill much lower than the house. You might not like that. So now you have to move your camera inside the terrain. So you, you know, whatever. And, but this is really the way I do it. This is the way I do it. It's simply a fill. It's simply a fill. And as I said, I use the salmon, so my fills are already in all of my elevations and my sections, and it's just a matter of, well, my gra ground line is really there, or my ground line is really here. Oh, oh, and, and another advantage to this is if I want to change this, I really don't have to update the elevation. Watch this. It, it automatically up. Yeah, see? See, it automatically updates because it's a CAD line. Perry's in the CAD line. It's, it's, uh, it's his in the CAD line. Mine automatically updates. He has to open up his is elevation and send it back. If they get automatic updatable elevations, then that won't even be an issue. But uh, so I, you know, I like Perry's idea. I think it's it's good to know. I mean, it's good to know for certain situations. But I think for the most part, I'm probably just going to stick with this method right here. It's it's tried and true, and it's it's been working for me pretty good. And I can kind of change the slope. I can lie a little bit if I have to, you know. You know, I can change that stuff. Anyway, so that's that's that. And and here's uh no, don't want to save it. And then the finally it's a section. If you if you want to cut a section through your house right here, this is a section. And of course with a section you gotta cut it through the house, which means you gotta cut it through the terrain, which means you don't get Perry's uh terrain fill. So it kind of defeats the purpose. And so for a section you gotta use my fill anyway, like this. But now you're gonna say, well, well, that's covering up the footing, isn't it? Well, all you have to do is uh, you send it to the back. I think. I think this is what I did. Send it to the back. Yeah. And now, and now you're gonna see. You're gonna say, well, you can see all this stuff in the background. But well, that's. I don't think that's true. I mean, I never see that stuff in the background. I see the section. So if I auto detail this, see, I auto detailed it. Now, if I update my update it, there it is. You got what I'm saying? I, I, the 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 the, uh, the terrain the, the terrain fill covers up the footings in the background, but it doesn't cover up uh, this stuff here. It doesn't cover up the other footings and stuff. And uh, and, and now I can simply uh, you know come in here three break it three break it and pull this terrain down to underneath the slab. Yeah, it's fixed. You see that? It's fixed. And if I have another hole in here, uh, three to break, oh, hang on, three to break, three to break, and I pull this down like this, it's, it's sort of a, uh, yeah, see, it's automatically updatable. Huh. Am I seeing an extra line? Oh, I'm seeing, that's the footing in the background. Yeah, see, that's the footing in the background, because... That's what the that's what the that's what that fill does is is because if I cut this section uh, at twelve, if I cut this section, gotta cut it through the middle of the house, right? 
all but up but up and send it to the current screen right there to the uh, layout uh, you're gonna see what happens where is it timer up I swear I could stretch these things out it's just it's really sad yeah so so now the, the problem with not using the fill like I'm using is now you can see the footings in the background and do you want to see the footings in the background I don't know if you do don't use the fill I don't want to see the footings in the background you know in elevation I want them to be covered up you can see the difference here see I can see the I can see the footings in the background of course you can shorten the camera you can short, shorten the focal length of the camera but you know what I really like to do is I like to run these uh, section views all the way through the house so I can pick up the windows in the background it just kind of gives it some more depth and stuff that's what I like to do and kind of gives it a sense of I don't, know, I don't know whatever I do it so for sections I really like this the fill it's a fill it's a mask whatever you want to call it and you can change this up and pick up a slope like this you get pick up a slope like this and it and it automatically changes see it automatically changed this because it's just a CAD line, CAD fill. So there you go. I think this was sort of a, it's always, I, I think it's always good to kind of go back and review what we've been doing the same way for years and years and see if that's really the best way to do it. And, and there are other ways of doing it. Anyway, that's the end. I won't, I won't belabor this anymore. Oh, okay, sum it up, sum it up. I think I'm going to stick with the fill. I'm probably not going to, st I'm glad I know Perry's method. I think there, there might be times when I want to use it for special occasions, but for the most part, most of the time I think this is going to work the best for me, and it's a mask, and it's for my sections and my elevations. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of slab on grades, and uh, when, I, when I open up my, my elevations, my front, left, rear, and right, that fill is already in the right location. It's always eight inches below the slab. And if, 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 if I, for some reason, draw, if, if I had to draw a raised floor foundation, I know it's 24 inches below the uh, finished floor, so all I have to do is grab this, all I have to do is grab this fill right here and just move it down 16 inches. So now it's 24 inches below finished uh, uh, finish floor. And if there's a slope there, then I have to, then I have to uh, manipulate this thing. You know, big deal. I mean, I don't know. You know, I think uh, I think Perry said he had something like eight eight different sections in his uh, template plan or whatever he uses. I have eight different sections, and I think he said eight eight he said, he said eight or ten. I have eight se uh, section cuts in most of my plans. Uh, you know, four in the y direction, four in the x direction, and uh, they're already there. And when I'm doing as builds, you know, I just got do an as builds. So I do my sections, and I I do eight sections and. I don't know, probably 20, 25 minutes, I guess. It's, it's really, what, what takes the longest time is um, uh, opening them up and closing them to update. So I wish, Chief, uh, hopefully with X6, it's auto-updatable. And the other thing I have to do when, when I do, do these things is I might change, have the room names in there. I have to draw the insulation, which takes a little bit of time. I know I, I, know I could do the uh, auto-detail, but I just... There's, there's another reason why I don't like to use that. And then uh, I have dimensions that are already in my, uh, dimensions that are already in my sections. You know, the plate height dimensions. And I just have to move a line up and down. So if it's an 8-foot plate or a 9-foot plate, it's just a matter of moving those up and down. So that takes a little bit of time. It, it takes time. It's not automatic. Um, and what else do I have to do? Uh, oh, the pitches. You know, you have your pitch arrows on your sections like the, uh, W. One two, three, you get this stuff here. Well, those are already in my uh, sections. And then I always, I already have a number 12 right here. And then I have a, then I have another number right here, five. <laughs> and this is another Perry thing. This is what Perry did. Perry's so lazy, he hates to type. And so he, he's got me into doing these macros. And this is what I do with a macro for this stuff. For this, and, I, and I've been experimenting with this stuff, and this is so cool. Here's a macro, new. And this is, uh, uh, roof pitch one and my roof pitch is five right done okay so you this is not not five anymore it's really roof pitch one and of course that's scattered throughout the plans that number right there is scattered throughout the plans on the elevations it's scattered on the uh, elevations and the um, sections 
And so at one time, I'd have to go in there and change every number from 5 to 4, because instead of 12, 5 and 12 pitch, it's a 4 and 12 pitch. Well, now, with, with Perry's little thing, all I do is I go, shoot, go over to here and uh, find this, uh, whatever it is, oh, root pitch 1. I edit it. I change this to 4. Change that to 4. And now, every time I've, looked, I've, I've, I've pitch, shown that pitch, is, uh, whatever it is, it's changed on all, all four elevations, and it's changed on all eight sections. <laughs> Perry. I listen to that guy sometimes, man. He's got some good ideas. Anyway, that is the end. That is the end. Thank you, Perry.